Let me guess, you can understand English speakers perfectly well when they talk at this speed. However, when they speed up and they start using slang and they kind of don't finish the thoughts, and it's all a bit mumbly and jumbly and you don't really know, is that a phrasal verb, is that an idiom, I don't really know what you're saying. It's harder to understand them. Let me help. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome to Smashing English. Before we start this video, be sure to subscribe because we make new videos all the time and I don't want you to miss any. So with that said, let's get on with the video. Okay, let's really learn how to understand fast English native speakers. I have some tips that will help you. Okay, tip number one. I bet you can understand this person. People often ask me why I'm so interested in the mental health of children and young people. And the answer is quite simple. Because I think that every child should have the best possible start in life. And I'm pretty sure you will find it much harder to understand this person. I know other girls in relationships let these things slide and, you know, let their boyfriends text every Tom, Dick and Harry. Let's try another example. Can you understand this person? The goal, the objective of economic policy should be collective well-being. How happy and healthy a population is, not just how wealthy a population is. I'm just guessing, but I think you can understand that person pretty well. But what about this person? That thing of not being able to sit back and enjoy it because you're always on the move to the next thing and on the move to the next thing. And I think that's why uh, during lockdown, I really struggled as well because it was like, on oh, the next thing, the next thing. And then it, there is no next thing now because we're all in COVID mm. and... Much harder? Let's figure out why. I gave you four examples there. Two of them were quite easy to understand and two of them were more of a challenge. Okay, so the two examples that were easier to understand, they were talking in a public setting, they had something that was prepared, they had a script or a speech written and they were presenting to a large group of people. The other two examples featured much younger speakers using a dialect that maybe you are not familiar with. They were speaking in a setting where nothing was planned, nothing was prepared, and they were just talking to one, maybe two people in quite an intimate setting. So my first tip is diversify your listening practice. Stop watching TED Talks, stop watching members of the royal family. TED Talks are great, I love TED Talks, but they are presenting, they, they have written a script, they have planned and practiced what they are going to say, and they want a large group of people to be able to understand them. So of course you'll be able to understand them, that's their main goal. So when you are doing English listening practice, make it your mission to find things that are unscripted, reality shows, podcasts, chat shows, diversify the listening practice because then your ear is like a muscle. Your ear will become so flexible, so adaptable. Your ear will be ready to listen to any voice, any dialect. So when you talk to someone, it's like you've done the hard work, you've done the practice, this conversation is easy, I can understand you. Moving on to my next tip. Keep watching for an in-depth analysis of the sounds that make English speakers so hard to understand. My next tip involves a strategy that humans have been using since the dawn of time to understand each other, and that is talking to another human being. So I want to recommend a resource that I myself have used for the last three and a half years. Without a doubt, one of the best and most effective ways to improve your English list listening quickly is by actually speaking to an English native. It's authentic, it's real, and it works. So as most of you know, I teach and learn on italki. Italki is an online learning platform that offers one-to-one -one customized language lessons in over 150 languages. Although, just guessing, you're probably going to go there for English lessons, but hey, I'm just assuming. There's absolutely no subscription involved, you just pay for the lessons you want. 30 minutes, 45 minutes, an hour, an hour and a half, whatever suits you, boo. And the prices start at only $5, which is amazing. Like I said, I teach English on italki, and I have done for over three years, so clearly, I'm a fan. Aussi, j'apprends le français sur italki. Quand le, la pandémie euh, occurre, um, quand la pandémie est arrivée. Est arrivée, merci. Compréhension oreille. Oral, oreille. Alors, l'oreille. L'oreille, c'est... Ah, c'est le... Ah. Oral, merci. OK, so c'est justement euh, ma compréhension euh, orale. And it's like, it's like your French is very good, but it's like the hesitation you put between. It's like... Mm. Merci. 
and it's great because I'm able to choose from a huge variety of teachers that are different ages, they have different accents, different speech patterns, different specialities. So if you're struggling with a particular accent, find a teacher on italki with that accent and you will notice how quickly that accent becomes less and less confusing because you are actually interacting with it. When you actually engage with a human who is using their authentic accent, pace and speech patterns, it's so much easier to decipher what they're actually talking about. And luckily for you, I have an excellent offer. Use the link in the description to start browsing for a teacher that suits you. And if you buy $10 worth of italki credits, you can get another $5 for free using my exclusive promo code. You are welcome. But go quickly because this amazing deal is only available to the first 50 users that get it. So go, 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 go. Okay, tip number three. Let's talk about the practicalities here because I truly think that this is the main reason why understanding fast English is so hard. And it's all because of linking. It's because of those annoying linking sounds that everybody does. So let me talk you through some of the most common linking sounds and how to understand them. I believe that the best way to understand something is to be able to do it yourself. So learn these linking sounds like you are going to do them. Try to make them with your own mouth. Try to actually do them because if you understand the mechanics of how how you make the linking sounds, it will sound a lot less alien when you hear someone else doing those linking sounds, okay? So let's look at this sentence here. I actually saw a dog in his window on Tuesday. I actually saw a dog in his window on Tuesday. Now, can you see how that could be quite confusing? If I say that really quickly, I actually saw a dog in his window on Tuesday. It's crazy talk, crazy talk. And it's because it's like I'm saying one big word. There are no gaps in the middle. It's just one long word. So let's talk through the linking sound. So the first one we've got, I actually. Now, no one says I actually. They don't put a gap in the middle. What we do, definitely in, in a lot of accents in the UK, definitely in standard English, most of these links are based on standard English, but a lot of them are international. Lots of different dialects use these linking sounds. So I actually, how are we going to link that? So what we're going to put in the middle is we're going to put a Y sound. So it becomes I actually. Why do we say Y? Let me tell you. So this is a vowel to vowel link. Okay, so we've got an I and then we've got an A. I Ah, all right, so there's two vowel sounds. So we have to create a link because they don't really link together without putting something in there. I ends wide, because when we do I, it's like we're ending on a smile. And this is the same for A and E. So when you've got this wide vowel, smiley vowel, let's call them smiley vowels. Then to get to the next word, if it starts with a vowel, you have to put a y because it's easy to, because our mouth is already wide. And when we do y, 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 it's a wide sound as well. I smile, y actually, y, and you just release it. I actually, I actually like that. Okay, moving on to the next linking sound in this sentence. I actually saw a dog. Hold on a second. I definitely just did an R sound. I actually saw a dog. I can't see an R there, can you? Am I, I can't see an R, but I said an R. And that is because we have the feature called an intrusive R. Now, if you are only concerned with understanding American speakers, don't worry about the intrusive R. But if you want to understand a lot of people from Britain, you need to understand what the intrusive R is. So the intrusive R is when we insert an R to link to the next word, even though there's not an R that is written there. We just put one in. And this can be extremely confusing when you're listening to fast English because you've definitely heard an R. Hold on, there was an R there, what's going on? But there isn't, we've just put one in to help with linking. So let's look at the example. I actually saw R. So the reason why we're doing a R here is because we have the OR sound of saw and then an uh, we have another open vowel sound, saw So if we didn't have the linking R, the intrusive R, it would sound odd. It would sound like, I actually saw 
uh, we would have to put a gap in there. But we don't like putting gaps in when we speak, it's annoying. So actually, saw feels like it should rhyme with door, right? It's the same sound, saw, door. Look at the word door, there's an R on the end, okay? So actually, this sound feels like it ends in an R. The word saw kind of sounds like it ends in an R, and that is why we are using the R sound. In a lot of UK dialects, if you have a word that could end in an R, it sounds the same as a word that ends in an R, followed by a vowel, we're probably going to put an intrusive R in there. For example, my name is Laura. Laura. It ends on a schwa. Uh, uh, uh. But what other words end in a schwa in English? We have mother, father, water, better. Oh look, r, 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 r. So that schwa sound sometimes is spelt like er. So if I have to link my name to something else that's a vowel, I have to put an r in there. So I say Laura is, Laura is. Laura is great. So push yourself, try to do the intrusive R, try to make that sound, get familiar with it, get comfortable with it, learn how it works. Imagine you are an actor learning an accent for a role or something, and if you can do it, you will definitely understand it when you hear it. So now we have this, okay? I actually saw a dog. I actually saw a dog. Now the next link is a little bit easier because we have a hard consonant, dog, and then a vowel. When you've got that hard consonant followed by a vowel, just push the two together like it's one word. So instead of saying dog in, you're gonna say dog in. So it's like the second part of that sound is gin. You've, you've put the G in front of the next word. It's one sound. I actually saw a dog in. Now the next linking sound is kind of UK specific as well because a lot of the time in the UK we will drop our H's. You will hear this in parts of London, places like Liverpool, Birmingham. Sometimes we just don't like the H. So for example here, instead of saying in his, we're probably going to say in his, in his, in his taken away that H completely and we've made it into one word. I actually saw a dog in his. We just smush everything together, everything's just connected. I actually saw a dog in his window on Tuesday. Didn't stop once. So how can you practice this? How can you learn how to do this? I have one very simple technique for you. I want you to say a sentence like a song. When you listen to singers, everything is connected. Everything goes like this, it doesn't stop, it just goes like this. There are no gaps in there. So if we sang this sentence, I actually saw a dog in his window on Tuesday. <laughs> it doesn't have to be a tune, anything, it can be straight. I actually saw a dog in his window on Tuesday. Make it one continuous sound, don't stop the sound. So practice speaking in song. So read a book, but sing it. That's my best advice for you. Sing, connect things together. You've got to become best friends with linking sounds if you want to understand fast English, okay? Moving on to my next tip. If you want to understand fast spoken English, especially with speakers from the UK, you have to be prepared for the schwa, okay? The schwa is everywhere. It's the most common vowel sound in British English. It happens all the time. And if you're listening to someone speaking, it might just sound like you're hearing the same sound over and over again. And it can be very hard to differentiate. Okay, so that was a schwa, but it's an O. That was a schwa, but it's an A. That it, It's all over the place. Okay, so if you are not familiar, a schwa sounds like this. Uh, 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 uh. It's not a very cheery sound, it's not very happy, it's pretty miserable. Uh, 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 staying alive, staying alive. It's just neutral. Nothing happens with the mouth, nothing happens with the tongue. Uh. In a standard English dialect, this sentence would sound a little something like this. I was a doctor for two years, a teacher for four years, and then an administrator, because I love change. 
Did you hear that uh, 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 all the way through? And a schwa doesn't have to be one letter. A schwa isn't always an A or an E. It's very hard to spot because they just happen all the time. So for example, on a word like doctor, teacher, these ER or OR ending words, that will be a schwa. So doctor, teacher, administrator, that will be a schwa. Also the word for, a lot of the time we don't complete that sound. We just go for, a doctor for two years, a teacher for seven years, for, for, for. We're not even completing the word, we're just saying for. Also the word was can become was, was, W-U-Z, I was a. A is not an A, it's an uh. So I was a doctor, I was a doctor for two years. I was a doctor for two years, a teacher for seven years, and an administrator, an administrator. The schwa just takes over, so you have to be prepared to hear it, and you have to know when to do it and how to do it. So do some research, practice, become, like I said, like an actor who was learning an accent, become fascinated by the sounds. If you are not interested in the sounds that English speakers are making, you'll never understand them when they speak quickly because you're not curious about the sounds. Okay, moving on to my next tip. So my next piece of advice for you is stop listening for sentences. Stop waiting for the sentence to have a nice end. Stop waiting for the thought to be completed. We don't speak in sentences. Listen to your own native language or listen to how you speak with people. It's very rare that we have clean sentences that have a lovely beginning, middle and an end. It's not the same as writing. We get distracted. We, we say the start of a sentence and then we forget and then we say something else. So if you have a target dialect that you are trying to understand, let's say you really want to understand um, Irish English, you're moving to Dublin and you want to understand the Irish dialect and you want to know how to understand fast Irish speakers, then learn what their hesitation sound is. Because some people go uh, some people go eh, some people go em, some people go mm. Figure out what that sound is because you don't want the uh, hesitation sound to confuse you. And try to follow physical cues if you can. Pay attention to the person's face and their gestures. Try to follow their thoughts. Don't just listen to the words they are saying because most of our communication comes from non-verbal communication. So if I'm talking to you but I, I stop and maybe I, I move on to this thought, you can tell that I stopped this thought and I moved on to this thought just by paying attention to my features. So if you watch podcasts, that's really great. You know, a lot of podcasts, they have videos now, so you can watch the person who is speaking and try to follow their train of thought because we never talk in sentences, it's very rare. So this is another reason why I don't want you to watch anything scripted because when it's scripted, ah, beginning, middle, end beginning, middle, end, but that's not how we speak in everyday life. Okay, moving on. Sometimes it's not that your English listening is really bad, it's that the person you are listening to is using new words that you've not heard before, or they are taking words that you think you know, but they've changed it. So let's talk about contractions, because we love contractions. English native speakers do it all the time, and I think these might be some of the things that can confuse you. So for example, the one that everyone knows, gonna. Okay, instead of going to, we say gonna. So I'm gonna love this film tonight. I really think I'm gonna love it. What about wanna? Instead of want to, we say wanna. I don't wanna go. I don't wanna go. This one you might not know, trina. Trina. Instead of trying to. I'm trying to find my keys. What about gimme? Gimme. Gimme that. Hey, gimme that. Don't know instead of don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Is not becomes ain't, ain't, I ain't going. This one you might not know, let me, instead of let me, let me, let me see, hey let me see. In it, instead of isn't it, it's like a clarification that we use a lot in the UK. So it's Tuesday, isn't it? 
kinder instead of kind of. Again, we're turning that of into a schwa. So it's not kind of, it's kinder, kinder, schwa, uh, I'm kind of hungry. And dear, <laughs> instead of do you, people would say like dear, dear. Do you want that? Do you want to go to the cinema? Do you want to go to the cinema? Do you want to go to the cinema? You've got to learn these contractions. You've got to be familiar with them because they happen a lot. And I don't want that to confuse you when people are talking in fast English. So in conclusion, if you want to understand fast English native speakers, you need to learn the sounds that they are making. If possible, you should be able to do their accent. You should be able to mimic their linking sounds. You should know what a schwa is. You should be able to recognize what a schwa is. You should know the difference between dad and dead. You should know the difference in those vowel sounds. So you've got to become fascinated by sounds and consonants and vowels. Get involved, do your research, and you will notice a huge difference, I promise you. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you would like to follow us on Instagram, you can do so there. Also make sure to check out italki and my exclusive promo code down below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Ta-ta!